Welcome to Guide to Cube. We're going to take a look at a scenario where you could end up with a domain on a different tenant than you intended. And how do you get that domain back over to the main tenant that you want to use? Hi, I'm Adam Saxton, and this scenario is kind of confusing, and so I'm going to try and unpack this and try to make it as clear as I can. Um, I've had this discussion with a lot of folks. I've had to walk customers through this a few times. Um, it once, hopefully, we can get to a point where it makes sense to you. That's my goal. So the scenario is is that I have a main tenant for my organization in O365. I'm using Power BI with that, and or I'm not using Power BI with that. I'm just using that for the normal Office or SharePoint items uh, that my organization uses. And then I want to go in and sign up for Power BI as a new user. And so I go to do the sign up and I'm signing up with a different domain than the domain that's like my parent domain. And when that happens, if you're the first user that's done that for that domain, it'll be what's called a shadow tenant. And I've talked about this in previous videos. Go ahead and look at the descriptions where I talk about what a shadow tenant is and how to take over that tenant. The scenario we're at is I've got two domains. I've got guyinacube.org and I've got guyinacube.com. The .com domain is my main domain where that's my main tenant. I've got all my users there. And I had a user in the .org domain that signed up for Power BI. And unfortunately, the domain was not registered with my... Uh, parent tenant and so there's there's two things that can come up here one is that hey I want to add a user or I want to I want to add that user into my main uh, tenant or I want to add that domain to my main tenant so let's look at it from that perspective from adding the domain so I go to domains and you can see here that I already have a few domains listed here so what I want to do now is click on add domain and I want to add gynacube.org to my parent tenant so we'll go ahead and type that in Remember, .org is the one that I want to add in. Okay, so next it's going to ask me to verify with GoDaddy. So GoDaddy is where I have my domain registered, and that's who owns my DNS pieces. So what this will do is uh, it will actually go in and add the DNS record for you. This will vary depending on who actually owns your DNS. GoDaddy is one that we integrate with. So one thing you'll see here is it says, look, guyinacube.org is already added to a different O365 uh, tenant itself. And this is showing guyinacubeorg.onmicrosoft.com. And so this is part of our problem. We can't add the domain. We need to fix that. So we know that there's another tenant out there that owns this domain. Only one tenant can own a domain at a time. In this case, we know what that is because we actually went in and signed up for it. You may not know what that is, and you may have to call in to get some help with that. So in this case, if you do know what it is, here's what we need to do to fix it. So at this point, I need to go to, so you'll also notice that it, it added the guyinacube.org here in my list, but I still need to go through the verification. So it's not completely set up yet. So what I need to do now is go in and let's log into the guyinacube org and take a look there. So we'll go back to the O365 portal and this is my org. All right, so now we're in the tenant for guyinacube.org. What we have to do is we have to remove the domain um, from this tenant, and then we can add it to the other tenant. There's a couple steps we have to do here first. First is we have to go in. So you'll know that we only have one user here right now, and it's for the guyinacube.org. So the first thing we have to do is add a user for the onmicrosoft.com domain. And we can do that by choosing this drop down. You'll see the on the on Microsoft.com domain. Every tenant will have one. So we need to create an account for that. Go ahead and create that. And I want to save this information into trusty notepad. And then what I want to do here now is make this user a global admin for the tenant because we're going to end up deleting the other account. So we need to have an account in here that actually is an admin. So we'll say global admin. So we need to actually sign out and sign back in as this on Microsoft.com. So let's do that. Okay, so we're back in the portal. And now we can go into active users. Now we want to delete the old domain account. So the one that actually is Gyna. We, we need to remove all remnants of guynacube.org from this tenant. So that's why we have to delete this user. 
If you have multiple users with that domain, you have to delete all of them. And then once the users are gone, we can go to domains and we need to select this domain and we need to uh, make sure, so make sure that your gynec, the on Microsoft.com domain, make sure that that one is marked as default. Then we can select the domain that we want to remove here, which is gynecube.org, and we can say remove domain. When we do this, this actually removes it from Azure Active Directory as well. So at that point, there will be no owner of that domain. Remove domain, yes. All right, so it's gone now. Now what we can do, now we've removed all remnants of gynecube.org from this tenant. So now what we want to do is go back to our parent, the main tenant, the parent tenant that we have that we want to add it to, and we can go ahead and add that back. So now if we go back to domains, we can choose gynecube.org, start setup. This time it says it's verified and we're good to go. Next, we're gonna skip that step. And we're gonna skip the add users. I, I can do that later. And then next, this is, so this part for setting up the services, uh, this is going to, it can go in and add MX records for mail and other items for your DNS perspective. This is completely up to you. Um, if you're not comfortable with this, you can skip this and do it later. Um, it's up to you. So in this case, I know that this domain is going to solely own gynecube.org, so I want it to go in and update those DNS items. Okay, then we can hit finish, and we are all good to go. So now we've got gynecube.org in here. One thing to note is that when we remove the domain from the, uh, from the tenant that we don't want, once it's removed there, there's a window of opportunity where that domain can get back added to that tenant or a new shadow tenant could be created. So if a user goes and signs up for say Power BI, right after you removed it, uh, it's gonna create a new shadow tenant and assign the domain to that. So when you come to here, you still get the error that you, know, you can't add the domain because someone else owns it. Um, so just be aware that there is a window there where it could get hijacked again. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're doing this at a time where we don't think people are gonna be doing that. Um, so usually late at night is probably a good idea. So just be aware that that could happen. Okay, to wrap up, we took a look at what we can do if the domain that we want to add to our tenant is taken by someone else. Uh, how do we actually recover that domain and add it into the right tenant that we uh, want to use it with? I'd love to hear your thoughts. I know this is a confusing topic, um, and there's a lot of there's some pieces here that if you're not if you haven't wrapped your head around it, it can be uh, a little frustrating. So go ahead and leave your comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have any other questions about it, um, I've gone through this several times. Um, I can try and clarify that for you. If this is your first time here, I'd love to have you subscribe. Every Tuesday, we're going to do technical items such as this that can be based on scenarios that are from the actual support side or just things that I've come across that I want to share out. Every Thursday, we're going to do an information roundup where I just look at some things that I found interesting uh, during the week that I want to share out. And really, this is about you. I want to get out as much information as I can from the support side out to the community. Really, the goal is just to help you be more effective at your job. So go ahead and subscribe and be part of the conversation.